the next image and the third one is the pillar of fire stopped the Egyptian army. So you have God's covering at the same time, and then all of a sudden the pillar goes to the back and stops the Egyptian army from destroying Israel. All right, all right. The next mention is in Exodus 19, Mount Sinai, where God came down the mountain, and the whole mountain was covered in fire and glory, and the glory looked like fire. That's where he spoke out of it. And the whole nation of Israel packed up their tents, kids ran to the other side of the valley and said, mm -hmm. Moses, did you go talk to him? He's going to kill us. Yeah. 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 God was coming down to introduce himself, but they couldn't. How many of you ever fought like that? You can't set for God's people. Yeah. Yeah. I know that's good. You know, I don't feel bad for them, but they, they sure, he wanted to come down and have an individual conversation with each one of them, and they just said, mm -mm. <laughs> we're not used to this. We're used to the idols in Egypt that don't talk. <laughs> and here's God speaking out of the mountain. Yeah. Yeah. So every place in the Bible where it talks about God's fire, it's a manifestation of God's love and power the example of the fire over the tabernacle and the fire of the presence of God in the tabernacle in between the cherubim over the mercy seat. Mm. In Deuteronomy 4, it says, Our God is a consuming fire. Yes, he is. That's right. He also used it as judgment. Once in a while, the people complained. You know, they complained for about 40 years. Right, right. And at times, he, the fire of God came, and Moses had to stand in the way and say, Don't. God, please stop. Yeah. And, and the fire is just the fire made it. <laughs> you know, it's the fire made it. You know. Another example, which I had forgotten about, was Gideon. And one of the tests of the Lord. Now, Gideon tests the Lord. He said, and the, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, okay, you want to put the meat on the rock. Yes. Put the sacrifice on the rock. And then out of the rock came fire and consumed the sacrifice. And Gideon's reaction was, I've seen the face of the Lord. I've seen the face of the angel of the Lord. And he went, woe is me. And he hit the ground and worshiped. There again, covenant. God was making covenant with Gideon, saying, Gideon, you're my man. Yeah. And Gideon was going, no, I'm not. And God said, yes, you are. <laughs> He finally got the idea that yes, he was, and went and did what God told him to do. And then at Mount Carmel, Elijah calls down fire. That's right. That's now this was this was something that a lot of people we overlook. We read, oh yeah, that's cool. But you got to remember, the prophets of Baal had been there all day, from the third hour of the day, cutting themselves. It's about nine o'clock in the morning, screaming, hollering themselves hoarse. Talk about yelling out your lungs. They yelled out their lungs, yelled out their insides. I mean, they were exhausted by the time the ninth hour came around. Because they said, the one who shows up by, does by fire is right, right. It's God. Right. And then Elijah said, get some water. Mm. I'm going to dig a trench. Mm. Dug a trench around the altar. Filled it up with, filled, oh, soak the altar and have a trench full of water. Now, the thing about that, remember, they've been in a drought at this time for three years. There was no water. So where they got the water? The only place they probably had to go down, get guys to go down to the Sea of Galilee and bring up the water and pour it over the, the sacrifice. And then he says, God, and God came. You know the rest of the story. The water, la the, the, the fire lapped up the water. Burned up the sac burned the altar up and the sacrifice and the water. Wow. And then again in Second Kings chapter two, as Elijah and Elisha are walking along, chariot of fire comes down and separates Elijah from Elijah. And he's taken up. Not just a chariot of fire, but horses of fire. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, you got a pretty I can understand why he goes, my God, my God. <laughs> Another is in Ezekiel 1. He has a vision of God. It says, the Lord, the man who looked like fire. The upper portion, he saw his lower part of his body, and it was on fire. And he looked up, and he said, it's like, the description is like molten light. Literally fire. Of course, Daniel 3, 
God in the midst of the furnace with the three Hebrew children. That's right. And the, even the king said, there's a fourth guy in there. It looks like the son of God walking back and forth. Yes, yeah. And then in Matthew 3 and in Luke 3, John the Baptist says there's one coming who's worthy. I'm not worthy to unwrap your shoes, and he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. That's right. And then in Acts 2, 3, tongues of fire. Oh, yeah. So every, all throughout, these are covenant moments. Covenant moment with, them, with, the, with the three Hebrew children in the fire. You want a covenant moment when you're in the fire. Yeah. That's the truth. Amen. You want a covenant moment when God's calling you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You're wanting a covenant moment when God says he's going to baptize you. That was announcing the new covenant. The old prophet, the last prophet of the, besides Jesus of the old covenant proclaiming the new covenant. A baptism. The, the Hebrews knew exactly what he was talking about because they had, they had their history. They, had, they, they knew the prophets. The Jews knew the prophets. They knew what went on. They knew the stories of, of God appearing as fire. And today we've taken the idea of the fire and made it kind of uh, you know, a special thing. Things happen and go, oh, the fire of God was there. I tell you what, we're supposed to walk in the fire all the time. Amen. Fire not only symbolizes the presence of God, it symbolizes the power of God. Wow. It also symbolizes the love of God. So when you lay hands on somebody, you impart fire. Oh, Jesus. Mm. My God. When you pray for them and impart fire, or you pray for them and you pray for healing or deliverance of whatever God's given you to give to them, the next thing you do, you, you expect God's manifestation. One of the manifestations is people get hot. Mm. <laughs> Let's put it this way. This week, people have been praying for, says, your hands are so hot. I had one young lady pray for her this week at, at CBN, and she started fanning herself, going, it's so hot, it's so hot, it's so And she, I laid hands on her to pray for her by touching her hands, and she was fanning herself. She was fanning herself with more fire. And she, yeah, so that's not going to help you. Wow. <laughs> and God's getting ready to do something. Now back to this word. I've had other visions over the year and other, over this year, but this is a key thing that God is saying to this region and to this nation, he's moving now. Yeah. It may not look like it in the national yeah. yes. with all the garbage yeah. going on. Mm -hmm. But you know what I say? What have we been praying for for years? God reveal what is going on behind the scenes. Yeah. God reveal mm -hmm. evil. God deal with it. Well, when God starts opening closets and revealing stuff, it's not going to be, it, we think it's going to be clean. It's messy. Yeah. And we're in messy now. Yeah. You look at all the mess that's coming out. I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican. It's messy. Right. Right. And it's going to get a lot messier in the next year. Yeah. Because God's got a lot more stuff to reveal and clean out. Jesus. Answering our prayers. Yeah. Right. You look at this time, it's our prayers he's answering. Yes. He's cleaning up the houses. And yet at the same time, the devil's trying to go, trying to raise a fit so people won't believe. But the fact is, God said in his word, this is the hour that he is moving, not the moment, in the moment. He said, you look at it, go in the hour, you go in the hour, and you don't prepare. You think, well, I've got 59 minutes before God's going to move. Right. Yeah. So I don't have to worry about anything until the hour's up. And God's saying, uh-uh, it's now. Yeah. It's now. That's it's good. now. It's That's now. That's good. And with that, I saw three pillars of fire come down over Virginia. And I understand the power of God, the presence of God, the manifestation of God. One over Cape Henry, and y'all know the, I hope y'all know the significance of Cape Henry, the first place where they came ashore and prayed and dedicated this nation to God. God renewing the covenant with this nation. Even though a lot of people have forgotten the covenant, 
the covenant still goes on. God remembers the covenant. Mm -hmm. He remembers the prayer of the, of the, of the, of the minister praying. God, let this be a place from which the gospel goes forth to the entire world. Let this be a place where we'll have city, be a city set on a hill. That was his prayer. After they had fasted for three days, because coming across on the boat, crossing the Atlantic in these small dinky boats that most of us wouldn't want to ride in if we were going, if we were in an amusement park. <laughs> And they rode through some rough weather, some rough seas, and they got on each other. And you had all these men, they got on each other's nerves. Mm -hmm. And they weren't in the best of mood when they got here. And the pastor said, you're not touching the land until, you, until we fast and pray. Wow. So for three days, they sat off the shores of Virginia Beach, off the shore of Cape County, and just looked at the land. Mm -hmm. And they fasted and prayed and got themselves right with each other and with God. Good. Then they came ashore. But the pillars expanded from Cape Henry. The one that fell up Cape Henry and spread north into northeast North Carolina and northward up the eastern shore, touching Maryland and into Delaware and Pennsylvania. Wow. This is in the vision. Another one came down not too far from here of a region in CBN, the fire of God. And that one spread out. Now these fires, you see pictures of the fire of God and something's always going up. This, this was coming down. Oh, wow. And spreading out. That's good. And spreading out. That's good. And spreading out. And the one thing God said in the middle of this was all of a sudden he made a specific word for CBN and region, especially region. He said, I will not allow Regent University to go to, go to the way of Harvard or Yale. Wow. Now, if you don't know the history of Harvard or Yale, they were started as schools of ministry. Yeah. They have started Bible schools and, and, and to raise up attorneys and ministers. Boy, have they gone a long way from that. That's right. And God said he's not going to allow that to happen here. Thank you, Lord. And when God says he's not going to allow it, he's not going to allow it. Amen. He can take that one to the bank. Yeah. He's not going to allow things in your life either. <laughs> That's one of the things he said. I said, God, why, why three pillars? There was one over Richmond. And that fire spread west, westward and east and northward, touching D.C. Boy, D.C. could use a touch or two, or five or six or seven or eight or hundred. <laughs> however many people in that that town can use a whole lot of touching. Yeah. 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 That's another person. Over there. And the fire spread out from there. And I asked the Lord, why three pillars? Why not? God's giving me a vision. You ask, you ask questions. Yeah. Right. I do. And I heard him say, Virginia is the gateway to the nation. Since the first settlers came ashore and established this land, I'm establishing my presence in the gateway. Hallelujah. That's amazing. And he says, I will keep people from entering through the gateway. He said, I'm doing a new thing. I am moving in the moment. I will do signs and wonders like like and the quantity that has never been seen before. Jesus, Jesus. Don't look to the past for what I am doing now. And then there was a little bit of a warning. There's going to be some people who will not move. I will still bless them. They'll remain, they will remain mine, but they will be blessed, but they will miss the fullness of what God has for them. Yeah. And then here's a real tough one. There will be some who will oppose my moving in this way, and they, if, they, if they continue to harden their hearts, I will remove them. Yeah. And people have been asking, what do, you, what, do you mean? what do you think God means by remove? I, I go, that's between him and them. Right. I'm not meddling in that one. Right. Right. When God says remove, it can mean a lot of things. They can lose their political, they can lose their power, they can lose, lose their authority, or they can lose their feet. People go out of feet first. And I'm not talking being carried off because they got slain in the spirit. And then the pillars of fire came down across the United States in 23 different places. Fire. So what he's getting ready to unleash is an amazing time. And then around the world, it's going to be an amazing time. He showed in college campuses and schools where the students and the teachers wouldn't be able to do anything 
but lay on the floor and worship God. Now the question is, what do you do with that type of a vision other than pray about it? I've been praying about it for a year, mm -hmm. ministering it for a year, because God told me to take it and share it everywhere I go. That's right. And this last week, I got so wrapped up in things at work and everything that I, I knew, I knew, but yeah, I had, I had it. Just ministering it. And all of a sudden this week on Monday, I'm getting, doing my prayer walk around, and one of the ministers was getting ready to leave. And I stopped and I said, raise your hand. And God started saying, fire, 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 fire. I began to pray for her. And next thing I, she, she, had, she had to drive back to Elizabeth City. Some of you may know her. And she's standing going. And I kept praying, just kept, and God said, keep going. Don't be like the king that stopped. Now y'all know that story. The prophet came and said, strike the ground. And they only struck it three times. God got ticked off and told him, you, you messed up. You should have struck it many times. That's what God was saying to do that until he tells me to stop. And, and she got four doors. She was standing going, I, I, I can't move. It's hot. I can't move. I got to drive back to this city and I can't move. I can't even think straight. <laughs> and that was the start of a week of praying for people for fire. At one point, stepped into the prayer center after bidding a few folks to pray over the prayer center and going out and there's just somebody else that came back in and stepped into the prayer center. And those of you who work there know it is a noisy place. Even when there's only four or five people in it, it's noisy. <laughs> you can hear people talking and praying and carrying on conversations. We stepped in and all of a sudden, I did not hear a sound. You could have heard a pin drop. And it would have sounded like a crashing symbol. I mean, that's how still it was. Isn't it? But people were still talking. Oh, I saw them. Wow. But at the same time, I'm, in, I'm going, what is this? And then I realized what it was. Couldn't see it. But it was there. The heavy presence, weighty presence of God. Mm. And it was like that for, I just stood there for like five minutes and went, whoa. And I started going black, oh my God, what's next? What's next? And then I went to one of the other assistant, one of the other coaches, and, and she was trying to get her Apple tablet to work and prayed for her. And she's laid, she's laid in the chair, she's laying back up. Uh, this is not fair. I'm supposed to do all this work and I can't think straight. I just want to go home and lay down on the floor. Two things happened. People kept saying, I feel such peace, but it's so hot. I feel such love, but it was so hot. The chapels went off the chain this week. They had a chapel the next day. I didn't even hear about it. Well, when they started to do one thing, and God came in and swept through that noon chapel and wrecked the place. <laughs> Literally, uh, Chaplain Stevenson was supposed to speak. She said, I couldn't tell anything of what I was going to do. And I just took over, and I don't even remember what I said. Wow. She said, but she was just so messed up, and everyone else in there was messed up. And I think, power God, power God. That's what he wants for us. He wants to impart to us. He wants to give, not only give you a word about what he's going to do. And prophecy is, is, is exhortation. Right. It's encouragement. And if that's what the Bible says, the New Testament prophets are supposed to do. Exhort and encourage. But also bring correction. Now, what I do is if I get a word of correction, I don't say it in public. So you don't have to worry about anything. Right. All right? I'll get with your pastor. Most of the time, he's already been told anyway. Mm -hmm. And then if he wants me to sit down with you and share what God showed, then we sit down together. It's very rare. Because I'm an encourager. God just fills me with so much love for people that sometimes mm -hmm. I just stand in places and just tears start streaming. So mm -hmm. I could be watching a movie and tears start coming. What's the matter with you? <laughs> <laughs> Especially if it's one like... Uh, Heaven is for real or something like that. I mean, I'm, I'm messed up. 
I'm like, uh, sometimes I go, nothing. And she goes, oh yeah, she knows. <laughs> <laughs> she knows. On the, I may not be showing it on the house. I'm just, there's little tears. And I'm like, what is that going to sinuses? <laughs> 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 so, so, movies touching us, you know, messing with us. But there are things in some movies that get to me. <laughs> Yeah, not the movie, but the Holy Spirit touches. The Holy Spirit. I've had such a wonderful relationship. I feel so blessed to walk in the presence of God and to be in the presence of God over and over again. And there are times I can be doing something. I don't even know what I can. I can be doing anything. Reading Fox News, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit will come on me. There are times during the day that I can be any, and all of a sudden God's presence comes on me. Yeah, that's my wife. She knows what that means. <laughs> she says, There's no place safe she can take me. <laughs> and she can tell you some stories, and I can tell you We went to one place, there was a, uh, it was me. This was a couple of years ago. We went to Lynn Haven Mall. Now, it was Saturday afternoon. We didn't have anything. We were bored. And I was the one who said, let's go to the mall. And let's go to Lynn Haven. We haven't been there in a while. Now, for me to say, let's go to the mall, that's the miracle God right by itself. <laughs> so we went in there. And we were walking through. She was... I think we had to get you a wheelchair, didn't we? We had to push you around. They had, had, had carpet on the floor at the time, which was... Pushing a wheelchair on carpet, still fun, folks. You know, I think anyone can attest to that. Yeah. <laughs> and we went into this store. It was a Christian store. It's no longer there, and it was empty. And God spoke to me and says, "Pray for them." I'm going to everyone. Mm. I thought God was supposed to pray for you. She said, "No, no, no." Walked over to the manager, and the manager happened to be my pastor. Wow. And he said, well, pray for me. So I prayed for him. God gave him a powerful word. And then he says, pray for my staff. Pray for every one of the staff. But in the interim, something happened. Turned around, the place was full of people buying stuff. <laughs> wow. It literally filled up. I said the presence of God was drawing them in, Jesus. which blessed the company, blessed the, blessed the associates there, but they got words and they all accepted what God said. I don't know what happened, you know, that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. We were in coming back from a conference in Florida and we stopped at this restaurant called Fats. And I said, if you eat at Fats all the time, you will be fat. <laughs> <laughs> it was outside of Clemson. And it was the year Clemson took this, the national championship. And we were all going in there, and it's a Saturday afternoon. And, we looked, and I'm going, all these people in purple and orange and white. And then I realized where we were, and I said, we're Clemson fans today. That's the only way we're going to survive. <laughs> <laughs> Waitress comes over, takes her order. Uh, one of our good friends was with us, Pastor Linda. And normal. And the three ladies get to go to the restroom. And the waitress comes back, and I notice she has tattooed on her arm a scripture. And I said, what's that scripture about? What's that tattoo about? She says, this is to remind me this is not who I am. Like, wow. I do the bar, and I wait tables to pay for my school, but this is not who I am. I go, that, and then I, God says, just gave her a word. Her eyes got big, she started tearing up. Dorothy and Mary and Linda came back and they tried to figure out what's Dorothy's going, oh no. <laughs> and the young lady said, you don't, you don't understand. Last week there was a, a lady minister going to a conference, probably the same conference we were coming from, gave me the exact same word at the exact same time of day. God does that. I want to encourage you because I'm going to be ministering to all of you today. I just want to do something special. I knew when I came here, I was going to minister to everybody who was here. I didn't know how many people were going to be here. I'm going to go with them. One of the things I'm going to do, right now, God has me praying fire. 
So there'll be some words involved there. I don't know that. Every time I go and I talk about this prophetic word, God gives me something specific for the church. Our church is represented, our ministry is represented. So I'm going to start with that. And the Lord is saying, it's been a, you thought about this, you said it's a struggle. It's hard. People don't do what they say they're going to do. God says, I've been dealing with that since Adam and Eve. People doing what they're not doing what they're supposed to do, and people saying they're going to do something, they don't do it. I've been dealing with this since Adam and Eve, so don't worry about it, son. Don't worry about it, son. I got you. I called you. I established you. And you are established for a purpose that's going to come out of this place to this community. This community has been has been pushed aside and forgotten by the government and by city officials. And they look at us, oh yeah, that, that area over there. Literally, that's what they say. Well, we got to give them something. Let's throw a little bit there. That's their attitude. They don't say it publicly, but their attitude behind the door is we just give them a little bit and it'll make them happy mm-hmm. for a while. Then we'll give them a little more. We won't, we won't do what needs to be done, really. That's the attitude. God's saying, My attitude is I'm extravagant. Yeah. I'm extravagant. Yes. My nature is extravagant, yes. and I'm going to give extravagantly. Yes. I'm going to break the back of addiction in this neighborhood. In I'm going to break the back of addiction. I'm going to break the back of hurt and pain and abuse in this neighborhood. I'm going to establish myself here. And people are not even going to realize what's happening until all of a sudden they realize, God did something. I don't care. If God's saying he doesn't care if they're in the, they don't come to church. One Sunday morning, they're going to wake up and decide to go to church and guess where they're going to walk into and they're going to walk, they're going to have used to meet them the night before, but they're going to walk in clean. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So my son, you have been faithful, and the Lord says he's going to continue to pour into you, he's going to continue to bless you, and he's going to give you a fresh vision, a fresh direction, a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing. A fresh anointing. You were called to work with the youth in this area, and he's going to give you the way to reach them. And they're going to not just look at you as Pastor Steve, that crazy guy in that little church. They're going to look at you as, he's my dad. Yes. He cares about me. And most of them have never had a dad that cares about them. He's also going to give you some steeple out your hand. Fire. He's going to give you his fire. It's holy 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 fire for deliverance. It's holy fire for prosperity. It's holy fire for love. For blessing. For blessing. Holy fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Flowing into these hands. Flowing out of these hands. Holy fire. 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 Holy fire, holy fire. Shout out. Woo, hallelujah. And it's going to be resonant. You're going to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning sometimes. I feel like your body's going to burn up, but it's going to be me. And I'm going to be talking to you and sharing things with you in a way that you've never heard. So you have seen or heard of me from me. You called out, and I heard you call. And the fire is going to come out of your mouth when you minister. When you stand and speak my word, the fire is going to come out of your mouth. My presence, my love is going to come out of your mouth. Pastor Angel. Your team, your team, you've been tag teaming the devil for a long time. That's what God says is the tag team. When one gets down, they tag, and the next one goes in. And the devil doesn't know what to do with y'all. So he keeps trying to box you in. Well, God says, I'm breaking the box. 
I'm breaking the box. And what I have for you have not even begun to see. Every prophetic word I have spoken into your life is going to come to pass. I'm going to take them down off the shelf. They've gotten dusty. You've forgotten some of them. And I'm going to breathe fire on them. I'm going to breathe the fire of the Holy Spirit on them. And they're going to explode in your life. Again, the community that you've been sent to minister to has been, been, been forgotten by man. Been taken for granted by others and been abused by others in authority. And God's saying, I'm bringing my presence in. I'm bringing my love in. I'm just going to flow through you around people all over this region. And through what you do in your work, you're going to touch more. And God's going to bless you more. Power's going to leap through the pump. Fire's going to leap out of your hands when you lay hands on someone. And I declare the fire of God. The fire of God, 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 the fire of God. And I speak the fire of health and wholeness into you. The fire of health and wholeness. Fire of health and wholeness. Fire of health and wholeness. The fire of boldness for you, Lord. Fire of boldness, Lord. A fire of boldness, Lord. A fire of boldness, Lord. The fire of God, the boldness of God. Shut up, my mom. Fire, 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 fire. Fresh hot fire, hot fire, burning fire, and blue flame. A blue flame fire is going to reside in you. And the things that you've had to deal with, that's going to be consumed right out. Sickness is going to be out. Health is coming in. And the resonant fire, the resonant fire that God promised is going to be yours. The covenant is yours. The covenant is yours. The covenant is yours. Fire in his heart. Fire in his heart. Hmm. There's some things in your heart you don't even know about what God's taking care of right now. And that's going to give you strength. God burning out in some areas of life. Some things the doctors have told you not to be concerned about. Students take their advice about eating right and exercising, but, but God's taking care of the issue inside the heart. The arteries are going to open, and there's going to be fresh flow, a fresh flow, and there's going to be a fresh flow out of the heart. And then your blood is going to be fire. It's going to be fire. It's going to be fire. And you as well. And you as well. It's going to be fire. Oh. It'll be assault to destroy you so that you can destroy him. And that's not going to happen. Do it again. The Lord God says he's placing this fire in you in a new and powerful way. You've been calling on God. Give me something. Give me something. Give me something, Father. I need something. I need a fresh fire. And you're getting it now. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. For the both of you, fire. 